Welcome to Dune Chapter by Chapter. I'm Dominic. Now, the last chapter was a pretty interesting one with the whole banquet and all the interweaving spies and all the dueling of words and things like that. And so far, uh, all these chapters, it's been like a slow burn, slow build up to something. Like each chapter has been showing us that House Atreides is kind of corroding or eroding within and it's all going to come to a head at some point and in this chapter it, uh, it it starts to do that so in this chapter we have uh, Lady Jessica is awoken by some strange noise out in the banquet hall and she goes out there to find Duncan Idaho is plastered drunk on spice beer and uh, they get Dr. Yui in there and they're trying to get him out of it. And he's just rambling on with all kinds of drunken nonsense about all the men he's killed in the name of the Duke. And he first uh, drew his sword on Grumman and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, Lady Jessica orders him to basically snap out of it. And uh, he then, uh, he just lets the cat right out of the bag in his drunken state. He just tells her, listen, I don't take orders from a Harkonnen spy. And then everything just, this is where the crap hits the fan. And so Lady Jessica is completely stunned by it. But then everyone's behavior that uh, she's been finding so odd lately, it all makes sense now. Because now she realizes that she is being suspected to, uh, or for being a Harkonnen spy and out to betray House Atreides. Uh, so she's furious and then comes to the conclusion it can only come from one place and that's Thufur Hawat. So her and Thufur Hawat sit down and in this chapter it's like they kind of have a battle of wills and a battle of wits against each other. So it's his mentat mind against her Benny Gesserit training which is really interesting. I thought that was it's a very very interesting chapter. And um, but first of all all of this is like the symptoms are growing and what it is it's Duke Leto's men they're losing faith in Duke Leto. Uh, they don't have uh, the same, uh, you know, morale that they had on Caladan. They've been uprooted. They've been brought here to Arrakis. And uh, for one reason, they've knowingly walked into a trap. Now, they didn't have much choice to either take this deal or go on the run, become a rogue house. They've only had uh, two choices. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's starting to wear down on the men. And these are all symptoms. There's been more reports of men getting drunk and going, uh, you know, going on wild rambles with spice beer. And that's what uh, Duncan Idaho got drunk on was spice beer. So we can see this internal decay of House Atreides. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all this stuff has been things that the Harkonnens has been, has been sowing into House Atreides, but it's also the Duke's own doubts in, in himself. We can see the Duke's been doubting himself, doubting his decision to come to Arrakis. He's not uh, operating at 100% peak capacity, I guess, as we uh, as, as we see. And uh, so this loss of faith among the Duke's men is starting to weaken House Atreides. And now on top of it, this uh, distrust between the, the members of House Atreides that the Harkonnens have sown in there by... Uh, planting in a traitor, but then also planting in the idea that making it seem like someone else is a tra traitor and uh, putting Thufur Hawat's nose on that person and not the person who actually is the traitor, which we know to be Dr. Huey. And uh, so this is a pretty intense uh, standoff they have because Lady Jessica demands that uh, Thufur Hawat uh, come to her quarters so they can hash that out. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're kind of like dancing around the subject. He doesn't want her to know how much he knows because he still suspects her of being a Harkonnen spy. And uh, so he doesn't want to give anything up. And he starts to suspect that maybe his life might be in danger. And he just doesn't, and we learn in this chapter, Hawat doesn't trust the Bene Gesserit in, uh, in general uh, because he's kind of got a glimpse of some of the training that they have in their school. And... Uh, yeah, he has a great distrust for them. And um, uh, so they kind of dance around this topic. And then she's trying to draw it out. And she's trying to shock him into uh, letting his guard down. And then she wants to actually show him that she's someone that he doesn't want to mess with, basically. 
And uh, the other thing we also learn in this chapter is that uh, Lady Jessica is pregnant with Duke Leto's daughter. And she hasn't even revealed this information to Duke Leto yet. And uh, so she's thinking about maybe revealing it to uh, to for Hawat because if he learns that, then maybe that will snap him out of it and he won't suspect her of being a Harkonnen traitor anymore. Uh, but she decides against it. So we have the first, uh, the first of this. Now we know she's pregnant and she's been pregnant for a few weeks uh, and uh, pregnant with a daughter for uh, Duke Leto because um, she was supposed to bear a daughter in the first place and uh, she disobeyed, uh, as we know, she disobeyed Bene Gesserit orders and had a son instead of a daughter. But now she actually has a daughter that she's going to give birth to. But uh, then even that goes off the rails as we find out later on in the book. And uh, so, yeah, so this is something in this chapter I really enjoyed is this. Um, there's a lot of like conflict in Dune that is like on a mental level. I find not a lot of it is physical. Like you kind of saw that with the last chapter with the banquet, how there was like a lot of mental dueling going on between the guests and uh, like trying to almost like a chess game, like trying to outmaneuver each other uh, and things like that. And then you see this again with Lady Jessica and Thufir Hawat. And at one point Thufir is almost going to, you know, go for a weapon inside of his jacket. And then uh, what's really interesting is he gets hit with uh, some Bene Gesserit training in this. And uh, where he stands up in anger and she uses the voice on him and demands, sit down. And he, like it's almost like in the book, in, the, in this chapter, it's described that Thufur Hawat's muscles basically gave out. And he had no choice but to obey that command. And he was, before his mentat logic could even kick in, before his mind could even kick in, he just immediately obeyed her. And so he got a taste of some of the Bene Gesserit power. And then, uh, then he thinks to himself, well... You know, how could someone this with this much power, why not just have your way with everything? Uh, but then Lady Jessica informs him, but then no one would ever trust the Bene Gesserit at all. And the Bene Gesserit are here to serve. But that's not quite, that's not quite entirely true. Yes, they're the, they're to serve, but the Bene Gesserit are kind of like puppet masters. They pull a lot of strings and they do a lot of manipulation and they got their own agenda that may or may not align with whoever, whatever house they're serving. So the Bene Gesserit, the orders of the Bene Gesserit is always going to come first over whatever house they're serving in. With the exception of Lady Jessica, where she actually disobeyed Bene Gesserit orders and gave birth to a son one generation too late when she was supposed to give birth to a daughter. Or the uh, not not one generation too late, but... Uh, the which threw off their plans because now the Kwisatz Haderach has come along a generation early, I guess. And where the Kwisatz Haderach was supposed to be uh, a generation after Paul. And uh, so the Bene Gesserit, we, we see like the Bene Gesserit really a group of you don't want to mess with. They, they're really powerful. They're almost like the, the top ones, the top group as far as physicality and deceptive ways and powers and all that goes like uh i mean the mentat they're really smart they're really super logical but they don't have like a lot of the more physical and mental tricks that the bene Gesserit have up their sleeves uh to be able to see through people and manipulate people and you know command people with the you know their with the voice and then all their other ways they have to do things and the weirding way and all that so through for hawat's really shocked by this and then uh, what I like about it is the chapter closes up with him actually gaining a whole new respect for Lady Jessica and her abilities in this uh, that that he's that he's got a glimpse of in this chapter, and he realizes just how powerful uh, of a person she is. And uh, but still, he, now he's been ordered by her to uh, put his mental abilities to figuring out well who it is that is sowing seeds of dissent and among the among uh, house of Trades, and not just folk and not focusing on her as the traitor which it's gonna turn out to be too late for that as we will see in the next chapter because the next chapter is actually a real good one it's shorter it's quite a bit shorter than this one 
but it's good. This is where the this is where the the, the action in Dune really starts to kick off with the next chapter, but uh, I will talk about that in the next video. So that's pretty much everything I have to say about this chapter and everything I want to talk about. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I will see you at the next one.